Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question today comes from Mel, K7MZE. He is a patron, and I would like to pay a special thank you to Mel for be, being a patron of this channel and uh, helping support this channel financially. You, too, can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Mel asks this, um, I have a question about folded dipoles. A friend has used three-strand rotor control wire to build a three-strand side-by-side -side conductor's folded dipole. It seems to work for him. I just watched your episode 899 about folded dipoles and am considering a folded dipole antenna. Question one, what are your thoughts, recommendations regarding using the control cable as the antenna? Question two, in case there are advantages to go with 450 ohm ladder line, will I be able to use the same 450 ohm line considering it must be run along a concrete wall to reach the antenna? I've read that ladder line is not happy when touching other things. True. Uh, comment, because I live in an HOA development, and it's very strict and has unfavorable rules uh, about antennas, I don't have a lot of options for the type of antenna I install. Nothing visible is allowed beyond satellite dishes. Thanks for your help. And Mel M7MZE, new to HF operating. Okay, let's um, take a look. Okay, let's take a look at folded dipoles. A folded dipole like this is connected at the ends. Okay, so it's technically a transmission line, but it's fed um, in the middle. It can be coax feeding it, which would be unbalanced. You can do ladder line. Uh, window line or even twin lead and of the latter three any of them can be used for this part up here. The idea is two wires that are a consistent length apart the same length so if this is a 40 meter well it's, it's just say it's lambda over two. It's the wavelength over two. Okay, just like a dipole. Now, the thing about a folded dipole like this is that the feed point impedance is much higher than 50 ohms. Um, 300 to 450 ohms, okay? So it's great for feeding with uh, a ladder line or window line or whatever you may want to do it. You can make this antenna out of twin lead, um, window line, ladder line, etc. And it doesn't matter if it twists or anything. It's just, um, it works together. Okay. Now, this is made of open wire type line. If you try to use coax for this, you're hiding uh, the center conductor from the outside, and you may not have good results. It'd be interesting to try, but I don't know what you'd do with it. Now, what he asks about is control cables. Now, it's not exactly clear, so I'm going to look at a couple of interpretations. Let's take the control cable. And we've got three wires in here, and we short them together at the ends. Now, you could do something like bring this across and feed it here in the middle. could do something like that uh, and see what happens. Um, it could work. I don't think it worked really well, but you can certainly try it. Um, another way that you could do this, of course, is just the control cable. Uh, short them here, short them here, short them here, um, and short it here, and then just feed this. In this case, you'd have a regular dipole, because the fact that this is doubled means nothing. It, they all act like uh, one conductor. 
Now, I have seen an antenna where people had a three-conductor antenna. You could use Romex or something like that. Um, and it come to here, and to here is fed here. And then this comes back to here and then goes up like this. So this comes back. These are supposed to be equal length. Comes back like that, sort of a zigzag antenna. And this has been proposed as a way of making an antenna shorter because the length is here to here plus here to here. So if this is length A, you've got 3A equal to 1 half lambda, or wavelength, okay? So this is a way you can make them too. Um, I knew a guy who had one, he demonstrated it. It does resonate on 80 meters, but he said it doesn't get out very well, okay? So there are lots of things you can do with antennas. As we've noted in previous videos, if you get anything in the air, whatever it may be, it's better than nothing. Um, I would recommend against trying to use these wires. They're so close to each other as a folded dipole. And yes, you can make a triple dipole if you use like three wires. Say you make some little plastic things that have three holes and you put them here periodically you can come up and feed the middle one and it's shorted to the other two that kind of antenna uh, works too and you'd have to keep these separate from each other so you have constant impedance with some sort of little uh, separators and you'll need something at the center to make sure that gets fed right there's all kinds of things that you can do now to answer your second question about ladder line um, if you're going to feed something strange it's always good to feed it with ladder line so we'll just do something we'll call this something strange Something strange, okay. Feed it with ladder line because the impedance is going to be weird, right? The losses in ladder line, um, you have 450 ohms versus 50 ohms. That's a 9 to 1 times there. These are the impedances that we're talking about, which means your voltage will be 9 times higher and your current will be one-ninth of what the current was before. Now, since your power losses uh, are equal to I squared R, okay, you take the one-ninth and that becomes 181st. So your power losses due to current are 181st, 1 over 81, in other words, almost like um, 1%. They're only 1% of what they would be in coax. This is why we will use ladder line to feed things with strange impedances. It's because we greatly reduce the losses. Now you have to take this into a tuner or into a 9 to 1 ballon and then into a tuner. Uh, some tuners will tune ladder line directly. I would put this ballon outside the house so you don't bring this strange stuff into the house where it might possibly be radiating because of weird currents on it. And then just bring the coax uh, into the house. Okay, so I think that answers your questions. So, there you have it. Mel, thank you for being a patron. Thank you for your question. I think the bottom line here is that you can do lots of good things. You mentioned the ladder line having to lie flat against a concrete surface. Uh, at a minimum, what you could do is where it runs along the concrete surface, twist it so that it's kind of twisted along the concrete surface, which pushes it away from the concrete a little bit. Best to get offsets, keep it about this far uh, from the concrete surface, if you can. 
if you can't, uh, remember that ladder line uh, transmits in an electric field that surrounds the ladder line as well as being within the two wires, unlike coax where the electric field and magnetic field are entirely inside the coax. So what you uh, want to do is keep that pushed away six or eight inches from everything. Also, do not coil up extra ladder line. Leave it, leave it out in a kind of a twisty uh, out somewhere so that it doesn't fold over itself and so on because that, that field is just itching to escape from that ladder line there. So, so I hope this answers your questions. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, those of you who have watched this far might want to help support this channel financially. Please go to decastlercom slash support. Pick a way that works for you. And if you want to send questions to me, send them to askdave, all one word, at A-R-R-L dot org. Not dot net, but dot org. A that's askdave at A-R-R-L dot org. And um, also, since the channel was hacked, you may want to check your subscription status to make sure that you're still uh, subscribed. Uh, check that. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. So until we next meet, 73.